Okay, hello, we've got this tutorial on calculus and in particular points of inflection. Tricky things, points of inflection. What we've got is we've got a curve that does something like this. Or maybe it does something like this. And what we have here is what we call a point of inflection. The trick about points of inflection are that we have a second differential d to y dx squared, or possibly, depending on our notation, double dashed equals zero, equal to zero. Um, the difficulty here is that it doesn't mean that we have one. We need to test, we need to check. Um, the way to check is that we will have gradients, in this case positive and then stay positive, if it was negative, we'd probably have a, a stationary point, or negative and stay negative. So we can check the gradients either side. We can also check what we call the idea of concavity, so that either side of the stationary point, and this curve is starting to turn down, so this is what we call concave down, and this curve starting to turn up, so this is what we call concave up. And similarly here, what we have is we have the idea of concave starting to turn up and concave starting to turn down. And where we get concave up, concave down, this is the idea of point of inflection, then we will have negative second differential there, we will have positive second differential there, and essentially what we're looking for is the second differential goes positive, zero, negative, or zero, negative, positive. In other words, d2, y, dx squared changes sign. The gradient will remain positive, and we found ourselves a point of inflection. So we've got lots of ways to to test, and the first thing we look at is second differential zero. Let's have a quick look at a example or two of this. And what we've got, let's, let's take a, a very easy one, one that you'll be familiar with, hopefully. y equals x cubed. And y equals x cubed. Let's do a quick sketch of y equals x cubed. And that will look something like this. And immediately you probably realise that what we've got right on the origin there is a point of inflection. So, things to look at. dy dx, 3x squared. And the crucial one for points of inflection, second differential, d2y dx squared, which in this case is 6x. Now, if we've got a point of inflection, that will be zero, but we will always have to check. And to make that zero nice and easy, x has to be zero. We sort of knew that anyway. If we have a look at the gradient, 3x squared, now when we square numbers, they stay positive, so we always have positive gradients. And since the gradient stays positive, we can say we've got a point of inflection. If we want to be doubly sure, then what we can look at is we can look at the concavity. And the second differential, where x is negative, you'll see d2y dx squared is negative, and here is positive. And so what we've got here is we've got concave starting to turn down, and here we've got concave going to up. So negative, zero, positive on the second differential tells us that we have got point of inflection. Now just to illustrate the the things we've got to watch out for here, let's just let's just consider the, um, let's just consider a second curve, something like y equals x to the power 4. And in this case, dy dx, 4x cubed, and d2y 
dx squared, 12x squared. 12x squared is 0 when x squared is 0. In other words, when x is 0. So does that mean we have a point of inflection? Well, if we have a quick glance at the graph of this thing, rather shaky line there, but the graph of this thing looks something like this. It sort of flattens, it looks a bit like y equals x squared, but not quite flattens, a little bit more in the middle there. And you'll notice straight away that there's no point of inflection on that, that particular curve. And we can, we can test this. If we have a look at the gradient, then you'll notice that for negative values, 4x cubed will be negative, and for positive values of x, 4x cubed will be positive. And so the gradient reveals, us, reveals that we've not found a point of inflection. And our concavity, if we look at our concavity, d2y dx squared, you'll notice on this side positive and on this side positive. So no change of sign on the concavity, d2y dx squared. A change of sign on the gradient tells us we have this minimum point and not a point of inflection. So we have to be a little bit careful with our points of inflection and testing them out. We look for d2y dx squared equals zero, but we need to test. There's, there's got to be a, a second line of, of questioning just to see what we're dealing with. Okay. Let's, um, let's finish off with one that is slightly more awkward. And let's have a look at this thing, x to the power 4. OK. Differentiate once. And then differentiate a second time. Now, equal to zero. 12x squared minus 12 has to be zero if we hope to find these. And two possibilities. x could be plus or minus 1. If we wish to test for, let's have a look at that second differential as our test. And at, let's try minus one. Second differential zero. Now if we put zero into our concavity formula, our second differential formula, we will see that we will get a negative value. And if we put it into here for negative two, then we will see that we get a positive value. So we get our positive zero negative change of sign. That means we have found ourselves a point of inflection. We can test it once again at 1. Let's have a look again. So f dash dash x at this point. We know we've got 0 there at 2, positive, and at 0, negative. So once again, we have found two points of inflection. And just to finish off, a quick look at the graph of this thing, just to convince ourselves that we know what we're looking at. There we go. It's a rather interesting looking thing. And points of inflection, not always, not always as obvious as you might think. We can see here that what we have is we have, we have very clear maximums and minimums. These points here we have the tangent lines are zero, and we've got maximums and minimums. The points of inflection, remember, were at plus and minus one. So the points of inflection were here. And what you see is you see that concave turning up, 
concave turning down, concave turning down, concave turning up. And we see our points of inflection, not as obvious as one might think, but at those points of inflection, remember, we have got d2y dx squared equals zero, and we will always get a change of sign from positive to negative on the concavity. If we look at the gradient, remember, and that's another way to test, the gradient on this side stays positive through the point of inflection, and it stays negative here, proving once again that we are looking at a point of inflection.